Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Ed's Attention to Detail. So as I promised in my last video, I said that I was going to give you an update on the Aircraft of the Angels F4J build series. So that's what I'm here for. Give you an update, let you know how things are going. Uh, don't hold your breath. Been going slow, but I'm um, going to give you a little bit of history. Um, now if you guys remember when I built the A4, uh, the Blue Angels A4, that I did a history on that airplane too. And I told you the reason why I built that specific Buno number was because that plane had actually been with the Blues during the whole time that they flew the A4s. So that is how I actually have chosen the aircraft that I want to build for the F4 for the Blue Angels. Is I look through all the different Buno numbers that they flew, and if my memory serves me correct, they flew like 14 different uh, F4Js over the course of. Uh, it was from 1969 to 1973 that they flew the F-4. So out of those 14, I wanted to find one airplane that was there for the whole span that they flew the F-4. And so I found it, I came up with Buno number 153076. Now this airplane was actually manufactured in 1967, but before I get into that, um, I just wanted to kind of talk about some nuances or some differences with this F4J versus some of the other F4Js that were out in the fleet. So in 1966, uh, McDonnell Douglas actually started building the F4J and a lot of them were actually remanufactured F4Bs. Um, the F4 had been in, uh, in production and service since uh, the early 60s and so they had five, six years um, a flight time on them. Now keep in mind these are naval aircraft and they land and take off from aircraft carriers. That will beat an airplane up really fast. Um, so there was a lot of wear and tear on the F-4Bs. So like I said there's a lot of them that were going through and being remanufactured. So the majority of the Bs that were me the majority of the Bs that were remanufactured, it's hard to say that, were F-4Js. All right, but there were a couple of new build F4Js and that's what I'm going to talk about here. So in the beginning when McDonnell Douglas started building the F4Js, um, the differences between the previous model, the B and the J, uh, some of the notable differences anyway, was the AUG-10 radar, that's AWG-10. Uh, it was an upgraded radar that the J was going to have and they had the GE dash 10 or the J79 GE dash 10 engines where the B had the dash 8 engine. One of the main differences between the engines, uh, visually anyway, is the exhaust nozzle. It looks completely different. Um, another thing is the dash 10 engine was considered to be a smokeless engine where the dash 8 wasn't and a lot of smoke coming out of the engine is kind of a dead giveaway for a fighter airplane. So uh, they made that change. All right. So the first, I believe it was 18 F4Js that came out of McDonnell Douglas factory in St. Louis, uh, they had actually uh, convinced the government to allow them to manufacture the airplanes without the radar because there were problems getting the radar. Of course, these were you know, government supplied and there was a problem getting the Dash 10 engines. Again, government supplied. So instead of putting the radar in, they actually put lead weight ballast in the nose of the airplanes and they built them with the Dash 8 engine. So the first 18 F4Js had the Dash 8 engine in them. All right, that's real important and I'll, I'll show you that here in just a minute. 153076, uh, they actually started with 071. So 076 was the fifth lead nose F4J that was manufactured. Now when the Blue Angels started looking for a new aircraft to fly, they were currently, or at the time, they were flying 
the F11 Tiger. And they were having a lot of problems getting parts for them. They were really, and I don't want to make this sound weird, but they were, they were getting long in the tooth because they'd been flying them for so long. And uh, they were having trouble keeping them in the air. The maintenance on them was starting to become an issue. So they were looking to upgrade to a new aircraft. This was in 1968. Um, now two things happened here. Because the old aircraft were, were getting so hard to, to keep in the air, but they also found out, and, and this was kind of an inner service, inner service rivalry, that they found out that the Thunderbirds were gonna start flying the F-4. Now, the Blue Angels, the United States Navy, they're like, ha, ah, we can't have that because we were the first American military um, aviation demonstration team. You know, they, the Blue Angels were established before the Thunderbirds were. And so they wanted to stay on top. They wanted to get the new airplane before the Thunderbirds did. So they actually looked at getting the F-4. And these 18 that were manufactured without the radars were a perfect fit. Um, because you, you don't take an airplane without a radar and go fight a war, which at the time, the Vietnam War was going on. So uh, these 18 airplanes were uh, sent off to test and evaluation. Um, and, and some of them, they, they went directly to the Blue Angels and never went anywhere else. Uh, 153076 did go to test and evaluation for I think two years. Uh, from what I've found on the internet. Now some of this information might be a little incorrect, but that's what I managed to find. Is it went to a test and evaluation squadron for two years and then it went to the Blue Angels. And it stayed with the Blue Angels from 1969 until 1973, excuse me, which is the last year that uh, the Blue Angels actually flew the F-4. Now this airplane actually went on, it was uh, converted to a drone, a QF-4J. Um, it did some drone duties and then it was converted again to an EF-4J, which is an electronic countermeasures aircraft and it served with VAQ-33 for a while. And uh, I read a couple of comments that people had left on the internet about it when it was with, with VAQ-33. And one of the comments that I found really interesting, uh, a maintainer, he said, this airplane was really difficult to keep in the air because it was bent. And that's how he actually put it in the comment. He said this airplane had been bent. Um, anyway, uh, it, uh, was scrapped or at least uh, charged off in 1981 out at China Lake. Um, that's all the history that I could find on it. Um, it's kind of a shame really that, that a Blue Angels aircraft didn't make it to you know a museum or become a monument you know even on a, a, a stick something but um, yeah they scrapped the airplane but that's the brief history on it so let's talk about the model. Uh, I told you guys in the previous video that I had gotten resin seats to go in the aircraft. And here's a photo of the resin seat versus the seat from the kit. Now you'll also notice here in this photo that the resin seat has a lot more detail on it. Of course, I'm going to have to paint a lot of that detail, but I think I can pull it off and I think I can definitely make it look better than the kit seats. Second thing is I have the uh, resin intakes. Now these are GT resin intakes that I'm putting on the airplane and the reason why I'm doing that is because the uh, the Hasegawa model the intakes are just they're, they're closed off they're walled off there, there's nothing there and I wanted the, to, to have the depth of looking down the intake and being able to see the front of the engine face and you can see here in the photo or these couple of photos here that it will have that depth. You'll be able to see the engine face. The, uh, the resin kit actually came with the, the engine faces. And I have painted the engine faces already. I've actually painted the inside of the intakes. And uh, I cut the hole in one half of the fuselage here that you can see. So that I can install this resin intake onto the kit. Now it looks like it's going to be a really good fit. Um, I've test fitted already several times and, and I'm real happy with it. So all I have to do is really cut the other side and, uh, and get it to fit just as well. Now another thing that I've had to do on the kit with the fuselage while I'm talking about it is on the vertical tail just aft of, on the vertical tail and just aft of the intake and also up on the nose. They had formation lights 
that are molded into the, uh, the kit. Um, the F4Js did not have these formation lights. Later versions, the F4M and the F4S had the formation lights. So I've got to take these off and I've already taken them off one fuselage half. I still need to do the other fuselage half. And you can see here in this photo where I've kind of done that work to take them off. And there's a couple other areas that I've had to remove um, the horizontal stabilizer. I had to remove a, uh, a stiffener that was there. And I'm also going to have to do a few other changes to it to, to bring it up to the Blue Angel standard. But the last part that I have for this kit is I have some Dash 8 exhaust nozzles that I'm going to change out. And you can see right here that I've already put the Dash 8 nozzle onto the burner can that came with the kit. And then this is the Dash 10 burner can that was in the kit. So you can see the difference between the two and you can see why it's going to be important that uh, I, I make this change because it's very noticeable or at least if you know what you're looking for that this Blue Angel model has the Dash 8 engine in it which is historically correct for 153076. So that's where I'm at with this one. Um, really hoping to, uh, to get a little time to start putting some things together, getting paint on some other things. But I have started, uh, it's coming along, everything's looking pretty good, and I think that I have a really nice plan as far as getting this one built. Hopefully it's not going to take too terribly long, but I don't know, it's taking me this long to just get this far. So that's all I got for today. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for your loyalty. Um, by the way, it is New Year's Eve when I'm filming this, so I'd like to wish everybody a very happy and prosperous New Year. So take care, God bless, and remember... Pay attention to the details. We'll see you again soon. Bye.